Pagandang hapon. Are you enjoying Missions Month? Yes. Oh, mahina yan. Pwede lakasan natin. Are you enjoying Missions Month? Yes. Praise God just to be able to worship the Lord. Uh, this is a great celebration. Baka rin ang celebrate tayo ng ganang Missions Month. Well, we will talk about that in a minute. Uh, but before we do that, siguro narinig niyo yung, ano, yung pangalan ng, ano, ng missions department ng CCF na ay CCF Beyond. Narinig niyo yan? Dalawa. Dalawa ang ano, narinig. Dalawa lang? Narinig niyo yung, ano, yung pangalan ng, ano, ng missions department na CCF Beyond? Uh, okay, that's better. So, but some of us, Hindi pa natin alam yung ano, yung kung anong ibig sabihin yan. Anong ginagawa ng, ano, ng CCF Beyond. So we have a short video just to be able to introduce ano talaga yung trabaho ng CCF Beyond. So let's watch the video. Around one third of the world, that's three billion people, have little or no access to the gospel. We live in places without any churches. Nor any Christians present to tell them about Jesus. That's why CCF's missions department is called Beyond. We go beyond our four walls and into the nations to make disciples who will make disciples. God has used our missionary partners to help movements blossom in places once unreached with the gospel. He's also mobilized Filipinos through our international satellites to intentionally disciple their families and communities. And when you partner with CCF Beyond, God will use you to bring their movement further. So together, we can make disciples of all nations. Okay, so yun ang ano, ibig sabihin ng beyond. Di naman malayo. Beyond is about making disciples of all nations. And today, what we want to talk about is a passage. Nandun yung, ano, yung concept na ano, reaching all nations. We shared it earlier. You read it together. I won't read it again. Pero yung ano, yung tanong ko, Actually, what I want to begin with is talking about the whys. Bakit? Nagbabless yung ano mga tao. Why does God bless us? Anong ano purpose ng ano ng blessing ng Panginoon? Have you ever thought about that? Usually, ang isip natin, lahat ng mga blessing is para sa atin, para may enjoy, di ba? Now, if you get something nice, we're able to enjoy it. Or if you get a promotion, pwede nga na mag-enjoy yung, yung promotion. If you get a vacation, Pwede nga na mag-enjoy yung, yung vacasyon. Okay, all of those things are good. Pero yun ba ang, ano, ang purpose ng Panginoon para sa mga blessings natin? So that's what we will be talking about today. Let me first ask you another question though. What do you think of when you think of God's blessing? Anong ano, mental picture natin? Pag ano, isipin natin, anong ano, blessing para sa akin? Have you ever thought about that? When you think about a blessing, what comes to mind? Ang ano nasa isip natin? Maybe one of the things that you think about, maybe like this. Like winning the lottery. Oh, blessing ba yan? Parang ano, isip nila, baka trick question yan. Baka he's checking kung ano, kung nag-gamble kami, ha? Hindi naman trick question yan. Siyempre, pag ano, Nag win ka ng, ano, ng 378 million pesos, blessing yan, di ba? Anybody here, pag ano, ibibigay kita ng, ano, ng 300 million, ay, ayoko. Ah, ayoko. Walang ganun, ano? Every one of us, we would think, wow, blessing yan, right? But you know, it sometimes is not really a blessing. Hindi yan, totoong ano, blessing yan. In fact, I want to show you this guy. Para siyang ano, hindi blessed, no? Ang pangalan niya si Jack. Si Jack Whitaker. Nanalo siya ng, ano, ng loto sa, ano, sa US. At that time, it was the biggest lottery payout in the history anywhere in the world. 300 million dollars. Hindi lang 300 million pesos. Imagine, 300 million dollars. Pero itong ano, tao na to, si, ano, si Jack, actually, medyo mayaman na siya eh. He was the owner of, of his own business, meron siya a construction company. I think yung net worth niya at that time, mga $15 million. So hindi naman yung poor. He's already medyo ano, mayaman na eh. But he won this lottery, and 
Very generous naman si ano si Jack. Kung ro kung may lumapit sa kanya tapos tinongan yung kung pwedeng ano tulungan yung ano yung situation nila laging ano binibigay yung ano yung ano yung winning sa sa mga iba. The problem is everybody started coming to him asking for money. So he would keep yung pera niya. Marami siyang ano pera na nilagay sana sa kotse na. Imagine twice na break in yung ano yung kotse niya. They stole more than $500,000 from his car. Grabe, no? Because he was generous. But over time, nagbago siya. Before, major religious siya. Parang mabuting ano tao. Ano, he's religious, goes to church. But later, he started drinking. Then he started going out to strip clubs. Then he started doing things, not partying all the time. Eventually, umalis yung ano yung asawa niya. Sabi niya, tama na. So he, she divorced him. They had been together since he was 14 years old. But because of the change in his behavior, umalisha. Not only that, pero may nangyari sa sa family. Yung isang ano, anak niya, may daughter din. So yung apo niya, na babae, her name was Brandy. So because ito yung ano yung apo niya, he was so generous with her. Binibigay ng ano ng kotse. Binibigay ng ano ng pera sa kanya. To the point that she got so spoiled, she started getting into drugs. She became an addict. Yung ano yung kasama niya na boyfriend, also addict. Na overdose sa bahay ni ano ni Jack. Namatay. Tapos ano, they accused na baka si Brandy ang pinatay. Parang she was the one that was accused na siya yung ano yung dahilan kung bakit siya namatay. So they investigated her. Eventually, they dropped the investigation. But a year later, she died also. Di natin alam kung, ano, kung overdose or pinatay. We don't know. Two years later, the mother, the daughter of Jack, also died under mysterious circumstances. So imagine... Here is a guy that has been blessed, $300 million, and yet, it fell apart. At the end of his life, this is what he said, since I won the lottery, I think there is no control for greed. He said, I wish I had torn up that ticket. Alam mo yung mga could be na blessing, naging curse. And you know, if we don't take the blessings from God the way that He intends, magiging ano curse para sa atin. And we want to make sure that we use the blessings the way He wants them to. Isa pa, what about, what about, <laughs> what about? Ayun, getting a visa to the United States. How many of you like to get a visa na papunta ka na U.S.? Meron kayong ano? Nais na papunta ka na U.S.? Mahiyain yung ano yung mga ano, three o'clock ha? <laughs> Ayaw talaga aminin na, syempre, gusto mo na pumunta sana sa U.S. So, is there anything wrong? Ah, syempre, parang ano nais natin, we like to take a vacation or even, siguro, lipat talaga doon. Kasi ano, you know, maraming trabaho, mas mataas yung ano, yung sweldo, etc., etc. But we also know people that have gotten a visa to go to the U.S. or to Canada or to Middle East. But mas mahirap na yung ano yung buhay na nila because they didn't expect that they would have to work so hard. Or they didn't expect pagpunta sila doon he will I send us a family. Kung minsan, makakaroon na nga ng relationship yung ano yung naiwan na spouse. Tapos ano, pag ano, pagbalik, he will I na yung ano yung family. What could have been a blessing turns into something else. What about basketball? Sino sa inyo ano, gusto na nga ng NBA? Anybody here NBA fan? Para, parang hirap talaga ano yung... Ah. Kahenyo, sige. Do you like the NBA? Oh, ah, marami. Okay. 
Alam ko na ano dito sa Philippines. Mahili talaga kayo sa ano sa basketball. So, what if you were blessed to become the second overall choice in the NBA draft? Oh, okay, ba yan? Eh, siguro, marami sa inyo na ano, gusto mong ano, magiging ano, in, uh, PBA player. Imagine, NBA player pa. Of course, you still need to grow about a foot and a half to be able to get that. But, okay, let's just um, assume you were able to become drafted. Blessing yan, di ba? So this guy, his name is Len Bias. He was drafted number two in the NBA draft in 2000, uh, in 1985. You know who drafted them? Okay, some of you know your basketball. It was Celtics, okay? During that time, sino you know, ang star ng Celtics? Larry Bird, okay? They had won the NBA championship that year. And the year that he was drafted, I you know, he was drafted to the Celtics. Imagine, paso ka sa NBA, mananalo kayo ng championship agad. So, amazing. Binigay sila ng ano, ng malaking contract, millions of dollars. Tapos sa signing, pagkatapos ng signing, nag-meet sila ng ano ng mga potential sponsors. Binigay ng ano ng contract na millions of dollars of sponsorship. Hey, batang bata pa siya, pero imagine, already part of the Celtics, already millions of dollars. Yung problema, nung umuwi siya sa, ano, sa Maryland, marami sila ano, ng get-together, nag-party sila, they snort ng ano ng cocaine. They were using cocaine for hours. And then big lang ano, na comatose si ano, si Len Bias. He was passed out. They tried to revive him, but he died. Imagine, two days after he had give, been given this amazing privilege to be on the Boston Celtics. He's already a millionaire, but he died. So is it a blessing or not a blessing? You know, sometimes we don't realize that our blessings may not be what we think they should be. So what is God's blessing? I don't even to be a blessing the galing ng Panginoon. So there's a lot of confusion about blessing or being blessed. Sometimes we think mga material goods. Kung meron kang bagong koche, blessing yan. Possible. Kung may bibigay ng, ano, ng bagong ano, position sa company mo, mas mataas yung sweldo mo. Daming ano, mga potential that these could be blessings. But we may have the wrong attitude because that may not be really what God wants. Or maybe sa ano, sa relationships, ang blessing, papansin na yung, ano, yung crush mo. May ganon. Is that a blessing? Eh, depende. Baka salbahe yung ano yung crush mo. Baka no, pag hindi maganda yung ano yung ugali niya, it could not be, not really a good thing. You know, all of these things could be good or they may not be good. What makes them good? Are they really from the Lord? Are they what God wants for you? Or are they just what you want for you? Are they for God's purposes? Or are they for your purposes? You know, ganot tanong. So, what is God's blessing? Well, let's take a look sa so, so Old Testament. So, Old Testament, may mga ibang ano, words that talk about blessing. So, yung pinaka, ano, translated na, na word in Old Testament for blessing is baraka. By the way, hindi ito barako. Hindi ito coffee. Hindi, hindi blessing on coffee. I'm a tea drinker, hindi blessing coffee. This can be material blessing. It can be victory. It could be blessed lineage. By the way, meron akong ano, isa pang apo. We just had our second grandson about two, week, uh, two months ago. So praise God for that. Blessing talaga yan. And I want you to know, hindi kami ano mahahabal kay ano kay Pastor Peter, okay? 22 going on 23 na. So hindi, hindi kami ano mahabot dyan. But I want you also to know, Quantity isn't always 
the, the only thing. Quality is also important. And it means that the quality of the apostles but quality is really in So, Joke lang. By the way, tanggal yan sana sa recording. Baka na makita niya na Pastor Peter. Okay. Another word that is used is shalom. Shalom means peace. Pero hindi lang yung ano, yung kapayapaan. It's a little different that it's deeper. It means that everything is right in the world for you. Parang lahat ng mga ano bagay sa ano buhay natin ay... Tama, parang it's exactly what God wants. So it's peace or wholeness or a sense of flourishing or harmony, security. But mainly, it is living fully in the presence of God. Anton yung yung panginoon. He is with you in a very special way. So parang dahil don merong ano peace. But there's another word that is used that is related. It's called sedek. Righteousness. It's justice, fairness, in accordance with God's character and will. So I don't know a relationship between righteousness and the peace or blessing of God. Alam natin yung ano yung, I know, siguro one of your favorite verses of Biblia, Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things will be added to you. What does it mean? It means don't just seek the stuff. It means seek God. Th- seek the things of God that you would want to obey God and then all of these things that he gives to you will have the right meaning. Parang ano maayos yung ano yung daan because you are following what he wants and then yung mga dinagdag sa na sa buhay mo magiging ano blessing sa iyo. Rather than balik na rin yan we Seek after the blessing with or without God. You know, you know, the idea of seeking God's righteousness. So, just a few passages that we are looking at, but the main passage that we look at today is Psalm 67. It says, God be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. We see here the idea that real blessing is that God's face shines upon us. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Um, nung ano, nung, nung araw, yung tatay ko medyo matapang. Hindi siya yung type na, ano, na masaya. Parang ano, laging ano, galit. Madali siya na magalit sa, ano, sa amin. Pero once in a while, if he's in a good mood, he's smiling. Nangiti siya. Okay? When he smiles, parang ano, it's like, ah, this is so nice. Ang sarap ang buhay kasi ano, nagsismile na yung ano yung tatay ko. In base na ano, laging ano, pinagalitan. Now he is just good to be with. He's fun to be with and everything is good with life. Parang yun ang ano idea that God, excuse me, I need to go back. That God has his face shine upon us. That idea that God is just happy with us. Please siya na, nandun siya that he's part of your life. You know what I mean? I don't know, face shining upon us. And then in verses six and seven, it says, the earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. God blesses us. Why? That the ends of the earth may fear him. You know, God has a purpose, and we will look at that in a few minutes, for blessing. Now, one of the key passages about blessing in the, New T- in the Old Testament is Deuteronomy chapter 28. Ang situation na to, umalis na yung, ano, yung children of Israel sa Egypt. Nasa, ano, nasa wilderness na, 40 years, nagwawander sila, and eventually, abot sa, ano, sa oras, God says, it's time, pasok na tayo sa, ano, sa promised land. So Moses is talking to the children of Israel these are the blessings that God is going to give to you. Ito ang mga blessing, yung mga biyaya na galing sa na Panginoon na ibibigay sa inyo if you will just follow His way. 
if you go into the promised land, God will bless you. So ito ang sinasabi. Says now, it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Better notice dito. It says, sorry, if you diligently obey. May condition. Gusto na nga ng Panginoon ibibigay na nga ng blessing, pero may condition. If you diligently obey. If you obey. Ano nga problema ng mga children of Israel? Hindi sila nag-obey. And you will see actually later, after the, these verses that talk about the blessing of God, meron din nga ng mga, mga verses tungkol sa curse ng Panginoon. If you do not obey, ito ang mangyayari. You know, we like the blessings, di ba? But do you realize that there are 13 verses of blessing and there are 45 verses of cursing? Ibig sabihin, God is warning them, if you don't obey, ito ang mangyayari. Now, if you obey, praise God, you will be given these blessings. But if you don't obey, don't count on blessings coming your way. Okay. It goes on and it says, Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall, you be, shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground, the offspring of your beast, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall, be, shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way and will flee from you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings upon you in your barns and in all that you put your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Maganda yan, ano? You would like to have that kind of blessing if God is with you and you're going into a new place. And it goes on and it says, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself as he swore to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So all the peoples of the earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord and they will be afraid of you. Notice a couple things here. It says, so all the peoples of the earth will see that you're called by the name of the Lord. Bakit binibigay na nga ng blessings ang Panginoon? Is it just for you to enjoy? Is it just so that you can have lots of stuff? Is it so that you will be happy? Well, that's part of it. But the main reason that God gives the blessing to us, he says, is so that all the people of the earth will see that you have a special relationship with God. Iba talaga yung ano yung mga ano, may Panginoon kaysa ano, sa atin. It makes them want to say, wow, I wish we had a God like that. And that's what God wants from the blessing that he gives to us. Hindi para sa atin lang. It's not just so that we will enjoy it. It's so that we will show to other people what it's like to be favored by God. Well, it goes on. So what do we learn? First, God's plan was to bless Israel. And God's blessing would be upon every aspect of life, both material and spiritual. Hindi lang yung mga stuff, yung gamit, hindi lang yung mga blessing ng relationship, ng family, kundi the fact that you have a relationship with God. That is the greatest blessing that God gives you. And then we also see God's blessings were conditional. If you obey, you will be blessed. If you don't obey, actually, ang sinasabi ng Biblia, you will be cursed. Now, by God's grace, once we get into the New Testament, nagbago yan. But the reality is we can't expect to be blessed by God if we're not willing to obey. Those two go together. And most of all, we see that God's blessings have a purpose. 
Now, if we go to the New Testament, we have a few words also. One of them is eulogeo. Eulogeo is like eulogy. Pagana punta kasano sa wake service or sa ano sa limbingan. You all find somebody, get up and say something really nice about yung ano yung namatay. Kahit na salbahe yung namatay, daming ano mga ano magagandang ano sanabi about him. Because you're supposed to say good things, di ba? You don't want to get up and tell people all of the terrible things the person did. That's called a eulogy. You means good. Logeo means say something good, okay? So that is to bless with our words or to speak well of. But it's also to beseech God's favor or for God to grant favor to us. Another word that is very commonly used is makare. Uh, makarios, makarios. This is to be blessed. This is the word most commonly associated with blessing. To live with a deep sense of happiness, joy, and fulfillment. Living in God's favor. This is what it means to be blessed in the New Testament. And another word that is related to this, I think we're familiar with, is karis. Karis is the grace of God. Biyayan ng Panginoon. Unmerited favor or kindness. A gift freely given and not earned. You know, a blessing in its purest form is a grace. Something that God gives to us that we don't deserve. That's what we see in the New Testament. So, are there some examples of blessing? Probably the most familiar that we have is the Beatitudes. Nakita natin to sa, ano, sa Matthew chapter 5. Hindi ko ano babasahin yan kasi ano medyo mahaba. But let me just summarize it to you. Sanabi na ganun ng Beatitudes. You will be blessed. It says, blessed are blank. Okay? It says, you will be blessed or happy or joyful if you are poor in spirit. If you mourn. If you are gentle. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you are merciful, if you are pure in heart, if you are a peacemaker, if you are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, isipin natin yan. Yun ba ang a blessing para sa atin? Inisip ko, what if I were looking at my Instagram account? Or if I was looking at yung mga influencers? Ano nga makakita sa ato sa mga influencers? Mayayabang sila eh. Oh, tingnan mo, ito ang ano nangyari sa buhay ko. Ganda yung ano yung bahay. Ganda yung ano yung vacation. Uh, nagpunta kami dito, nagpunta kami doon. Parang ano, nagyayabang sila eh, di ba? Ako lang yung ano yung napansin yan. Parang ano, it's like they put themselves up as, see my life is so good. And then, hashtag blessed. Di ba? Marami na mga ganon, hashtag blessed. But actually, they're not saying anything about God. They're saying about Sirili Nile. Parang yabang because they want to show how good their life is so that everybody will like and follow them. And then if everybody likes and follows them, mas mataas yung ano yung kita nila. Sorry, anyway. But you compare that to ang sinasabi ni Jesus. What does he say? He says, you will be blessed if you are poor in spirit. If you mourn, mourn with those that mourn and weep with those that weep because you have compassion on them. When you are gentle, you can even go online ngayon. Hindi sila gentle. Bombastic sila. Tama sila. Mali yung ano yung mga ano. Iba. Parang they like to fight. Okay? If you are merciful, if you are pure in heart, parang ano yung mga online today. They're boasting about so many things that are against what God wants. Iba? And even if you are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, you should rejoice. Why? Because the greatest blessing isn't here and now. Ang pinaka blessing natin ay salangit. God reserves a special place for blessing when we get to heaven. So right now, you may not experience all of the things that all of these influencers are saying, na kailangan natin para maging happy sa buhay. 
but you have something much, much, much better in store for you. Kasi darating yung ano yung araw na there will be a just judgment. God is going to separate the sheep from the goats. I hope you are not a goat. I like kambing, sarap ang anong kaldereta, but I don't want to be a goat. I want to be a sheep. I want to follow what God wants. So this is what is truly being blessed according to Jesus. Another passage we see, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Ano nga mga blessings na yan? Well, we have been chosen by God. Pinili, na, uh, pinili sa ng Panginoon for no good reason. Even before we were born. It's not because of what we did. He just chose to give us eternal salvation. To be a recipient of his grace. To be redeemed by Jesus. To be forgiven of our sins. He's given us a place in heaven. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ito nga namang ano ginawa ng Panginoon para sa atin just because of his grace for us. Imagine all of the blessings that God has given to us. Yung ano yung problema, hindi makikita ngayon. Ang makikita sa ano, sa langit. But they are much, much greater blessings than the material blessings that people crave today. Another passage, some of you are saying, well, what about material blessings? Hindi ba ano kasama yan sa ano, sa mga blessings ng Panginoon? Okay, tinan natin. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always, having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. Sarap yan. Meron tayong ano, abundance, di ba? Gusto niyo na ano, may abundance? Hello, dalawa lang yung ano yung gusto. Ano? Gusto niyo na ano, ng abundance? Of course, we all like that, but bakit binibigay ang Panginoon ng abundance? Nakalagay dito, we will have an abundance for every good deed. It's not just so that we will enjoy it. It's not just so that we will have lots of stuff. It's so that we will be able to be a blessing to others. Of course, we can enjoy it. We can enjoy the things that God gives. Pero hindi yan ang pinaka-purpose ng Panginoon sa atin. It's so that we will have what we need to bless others. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. One of everyone's favorite verses. Okay, what does it say? And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Sarap yan, ano? Nice to know that God will promise to supply all of our needs. Pero alam mo, ano, bawat verse ano, sa Biblia may context. Anong ano context ng verse 19? Anong ano ang um, before verse 19? What comes before? You don't know 18? So usually before 19, may 18, right? Ang galing nyo, ha? Itong ano verse 18. It says, but I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Anong ano? Anong ginawa nila? Binigay nila ng love offering para kila Paul. When they left Philippi, they went to Thessalonica, then they went to Athens. And it says, according to Paul, several times, they gave love offering to Paul so that he would have what he needed to be able to continue the ministry. And then, what does it say? It says, then, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If you give generously, if you are blessing those that are doing ministry, don't worry about giving too much. You're not going to outgive God. He is going to provide for you. Shang ano magbibigay? Shang ano ang ang magbibigay ng ano ng kapalit ng ano binigay sa iba? He will take care of you. He will supply you abundantly. 
but it's because you have generously given to someone else. It's not just for us to enjoy and to keep it to ourselves. It is so that we can bless others as well. So, what is the purpose of God's blessing? We see something from the Old Testament that is very important. And I'm going to try to cut this short because he made you though. But let's start in Genesis chapter 12. This is the story of Abraham. Now, we know the story of Abraham. He was enjoying life in another country. God appeared to him and said, I am going to send you into a land na hindi mo alam. Hindi nakapuntakadon. You don't know even where you are going, but I'm going to send you there, and I am going to make you a great nation. And ito nga no promise niya. I just want to show you here. It says, you shall be a blessing, and in you all of the families of the earth will be blessed. So I'm going to send you to another country. At that time, wala pa siyang anak. Wala pa siyang ano, family. Yung ano yung asawa niya, tsaka yung mga servants. Sila lang ang ano, ang, ang nasa caravan nila. Pero sabi ng ano ng, ng Diyos. He said, I will bless you. I'm going to make you a great nation. And your family is going to bless the entire world. Okay. So what does he do? Umalisha sana sa dati niyang ano, tirahan. Said, okay, I'll give it up. I will do what God wants me to do. Sumanod yung yung utos ng ng Panginoon. And he went into this new land. When he gets there, we have another promise that is given to him. This is 25 years later. Now remember, God said, I am going to give you a seed through which you will bless the whole world. Pero wala pa siyang anak. So, ang tanong ni ano ni Abraham, uh, Lord, 25 years na, hindi na ako ano bata, eh wala pa akong ano, anak. I don't gonna go nothing. So, of course, we know the story. He tried to take things into his own hands. He took the bad advice of his wife. He said, why don't you get the maid pregnant? And he did. And now we have the war in the Middle East and that is the end of life, Okay. By the way, if anybody tells you, just take your maid, run. Don't do it, okay? Bad idea. So now the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, I promise that next year when I come back, you are going to have a son. And you remember Sarah laughed. You know, you know, the story that she was back in the back room, narinig yung ano yung conversation nila, tapos, she's, I'm 90 years old. Hindi mangyayari yan. By the way, how many of you ladies want to have a baby when you're 90? Anybody here? Gusto mo ano magbuntis pag 90 years old? Wala, no? She says, it's crazy. It's impossible. Impossible na ano, makaroon na ganda ng anak at this age. And that's why she laughed. But the angel said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. He said, it's still going to happen. Next year I'm going to come back and you're going to have a son. And sure enough, he did. And we know his name is Isaac. Now fast forward again. Probably about 15 or 20 years later, we don't know exactly how old he was, but God says, to Abraham, I want you to go to Mount Moriah and I want you to sacrifice Isaac, your only son. Crazy. Why would God do that? Well, he was testing him if he's willing to trust him. So Abraham says, okay, Isaac, let's go. Here, bring the wood, bring the fire. And the kid says, take a moment, no, dad, asan ba yung ano yung sacrifice? He says, it's okay, don't worry, God will provide. And so they go up to the mountain, he's about to, to kill him, ties up his son. I, I can't imagine what Isaac was thinking at this point. God, are you crazy? But he does it and then God provides a, a ram just at the last minute and says, don't kill your son, but now I know that you're willing to obey. And then it says, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing, being willing to sacrifice his son, 
Indeed, I will greatly bless you and will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Because he obeyed. He said, I am going to bless your seed. Sino nga na seed na sinasabi niya? It's not Isaac. It is Jesus. Jesus came from the lineage of Abraham through Isaac. Well, you go on through the rest of the story. You find that the same promise is given to Isaac. He says, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed through you. Then he says it again to Jacob. He says, in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He repeats it again in the book of Isaiah. It says, my servant, see Jesus Yen, this is a prophecy about the, the chosen one. It says, my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He is going to be a light to the nations. This promised one, this seed, is going to be for the nations. That is the plan of God to bless Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the, the Israeli nation, the Jewish nation. It's all to bring about God's plan to bless the nations. And we see the culmination of that in Galatians chapter 3. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. He said, lahat na mga ginawa ko sa Old Testament, it all points to Jesus. And now Jesus has come and he has become a curse so that we all could be blessed. You know, lahat tayo ano Gentile. Alam natin yan. You are not a Jew unless you were born a Jew, which I don't think there's any Jews in this room. I think lahat tayo ano. We are the beneficiaries. Kami ang ano, tayo ang ano, ang binigay sa ano sa atin ng Panginoon, ng yung salvation that was only supposed to be for the Jews. But because of Jesus, now we share in that blessing. So, if we look at it, we go back to Psalm 67. And we see it says, God be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on all the earth, that your salvation would be known among the nations. And in verses six and seven, the earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, blesses us. God blesses us that the ends of the earth may fear him. Why are we blessed? So that the ends of the earth would fear the Lord. That's the reason that we are blessed. The purpose of God's blessing is to bless the world. Now, I know this has been very parang theological and medyo mahirap na maintindihan lahat. So let me make it a little bit more practical because I'm going to share my own story. Okay? Nung ano nung bata pa ako, nung ano high school ako, meron akong ano nais, parang ano yung life goal sa akin, I wanted to become an electronic engineer, then I was going to get an MBA, then I was going to start my own company, and I already know my business concept. Ang isip ko ano, actually this is before there are cell phones. Actually, maybe before there was electricity, medyo matanda na ako eh. That was a joke. I just want to know if you're alive, okay? So during that time, I'm thinking, what if we had a network where people could call each other and communicate with each other without having to use a wired telephone? Maganda nga ng idea na yan. Ngayon, luma na yan. Kasi everybody, you've got your cell phone with you. But you have to understand, this was 1974. There is no such thing as a cell phone. Nasa isip ko, what if we had something like this? That was my business plan. So I wanted to become rich. And I already knew how I was going to get there. But then, my senior year in high school, someone shared the gospel with me. 
Now, I had known about Christ before, but it was the first time I understood that he wanted me ibibigay yung ano yung buong buhay ko sa ano sa kanya. Hindi lang naligtas ako, kundi siya nga na magiging ano, Panginoon ko. Parang ganon. And it was like, everything changed in my life. I was discipled by a guy with Campus Crusade for Christ, and he helped me to grow in my faith in Christ. And then he taught me how to make disciples of others, to evangelize others. Paano pwedeng ibahagi ng ano ng you know, yung magandang balita sana sa mga kaibigan ko. We saw many people in our high school come to know the Lord. And sobrang saya ako. Parang this is better than making a lot of money. But I ended up still, I went to, ano, to engineering school. I still went to college. But when I was in college, I was a campus crusade major and an engineering minor. Parang ano, halos lahat ng, ng oras ko nagpunta sa ano sa ministry. And I just barely survived in engineering. Pero nakagraduate ako. As I was about to graduate, ang plano ko ano magiging staff member full-time ng Campus Crusade for Christ. Kasi yun talagang ano nais ko. I, I lost my desire to make a lot of money and just do this engineering stuff. But I had a plan that I would go on a short-term per, um, uh, like a summer project ang sinasabi nila, short-term mission trip to Eastern Europe. So, plano ko, ano, for six months, papunta ko doon, pagkatapos noon, mag-join ako ng, ng, ng Campus Crusade staff. Yung problema, yung, ano, yung project, the cancel. So, wala akong ano gagawin. Six months, wala akong ano plano. I can't join Campus Crusade right away kasi hindi pwede, too late to apply. So, Parang dead in the water. Wala akong ano magagawa eh. And at that time, my parents said, uh, Jim, you just spent five years in engineering school. Wouldn't you like to just try and see if maybe you would like to be an engineer? And so out of obedience to my parents, I decided I would apply sa mga ibang ano companies. Pero yung ano yung condition ko sa application. Sabi ko sa mga companies as I applied, I will only be with your company for one year. Pagkatapos, mag-resign ako, magiging ano missionary ako. Ayun. If you are an HR, imagine, isipin mo, HR ka, tapos tanggap ng ano ng application. Ito ang ano application. Gusto niya na yung ano yung position ito. Kaso, isang taon lang. Pagkatapos, aalis siya. Tanggapin mo yan? I don't think so. Pero yung, ano, yung amazing thing is that two companies actually offered me jobs. Kahit na isang taon lang. And the company that I signed on with, they were so cheap. Sobra sila gano, karipot, na they, they accepted me because they wanted a project engineer. A project engineer takes a project and completes it to be able to actually ship whatever it is. And this project was a $5,000 piece of test equipment. Ako bagong graduate pa lang eh. What do I know about, you know, the whole process of, of designing something and then getting it shipped and all of that? Wala akong alam alam eh. But they still accepted me. And by God's grace, I was able to get the product designed and shipped they were happy with me. And so one day, after a few months with a company, it was the head of marketing engineering. Sabinya, I want to go out and play racquetball with you. So I said, sure. And then afterwards, we can eat dinner. I like to play racquetball. So I said, sure. I beat him very badly, I'd like to say. I'm very competitive. So after I beat him, I thought, I know, I don't know if he still wants to have dinner with me because, you know, major. But he, yeah. Anyway, so we went out for dinner anyway. And then I realized the real reason that he wanted to meet me. It was actually a recruiting dinner. What he wanted to do was help me transfer from my department, R&D, to his department, marketing engineering. So, sabi niya, ganito. Bigyan kita ng ng raise, I don't want to raise. I will double your salary. I will give you $175,000 a year expense account. 
you will be able to travel all over the world to be able to go to our different clients, Ibn Bansa, and you only have to transfer internally. Hindi naman lipat si ibang ano company. It's an internal transfer lang. And at the time, I would be offered a salary that in today's dollars would be $160,000 a year. And I'm 20 year, or 22 years old, fresh college graduate. So, siyempre, ang isip niya, slam dunk to. Sugurado tatanggap yung, ano, yung, yung offer niya. And I looked at him and I said, you know, your, uh, sorry, your offer is very nice. Ang sarap. I really want to to take it. But I am going to leave the company in six months and I'm going to become a missionary in Asia. And you could see the look on his face. It's like, you are crazy. Sirang ulo talaga. As in, what on earth are you thinking? And at the time God gave me the words to say, I said, there is more security to be in the center of God's will than anywhere else. And I know this is where God wants me to be. So, the look on his face still stayed the same. It's like, <laughs> he's not a believer. He can't understand this. In fact, he was independently wealthy. Marami siyang pera. Hindi kailangan matrabaho, but he was bored. Wala siyang ibang ano ginagawa, and he likes the job. He was married to a lady that is a PhD psychiatrist. They live in Newport Beach, California, in a gated subdivision. Marami silang pera. May his and her sports car. Lahat. They have everything. So in his mind, he's in a better, more secure situation than I am. Within three months, his wife filed for divorce. His brother sued him for all of his inheritance, so tied up all of his assets in litigation, and he got fired from the job. If I would have gone with that, I would have also been fired because he bought a new I would be tied to him. So it was true. There is more security being where God wants you to be than anywhere else. What I'm saying is God put on my heart to bless the nations. And God has never failed to provide for me and my wife or my family. It's not that we haven't had difficulty, we've had challenges, but God has been so, so faithful over the years. 44 years now, we have been raising support People give money to Campus Crusade to support us, and we have never missed a paycheck. We have never gotten fired. God has always provided for us. So, what we found is that God blesses us to bless the world. So that's my story. So how are we doing in blessing the world? Are we actually seeing the world blessed? Well, the good news, there are more followers of Christ today than at any time in history. 2.4 billion people today identify as Christians. It's about 31% of the world's population. One in nine people today would say they have a personal relationship with God through faith in Christ. Ito mga nominal, ito yung mga tunay na born again. Sabi nila, kilala ko si Jesus. Siyang ano, takapagliktas ko. Okay? And evangelical Christianity is the second fastest growing major religion in the world. So we're doing okay in some ways. That's the good news. But the bad news, nearly three billion people have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Three billion people. 87% of all Hindus, Muslims, and Buddhists do not even know a Christian who could share Christ with them. Even if they wanted to know Jesus, wala siyang kilala na pwedeng ibahagi ng good news sana sa kanila eh. And out of 17,000 recognized people groups in the world, over 4,000 still are considered unreached. Let me tell you something about the 1040 window. Or wait, 
I will let Pastor Peter tell you about the 1040 window. So let's watch this video quickly. This is the sobering reality. Are you familiar with 1040 window? The 1040 window, if you look at the map, you have 10 degrees, 40 degrees latitude. What is so unique about a 1040 window? This is what shocked me. 90% of all unbelievers and rich and evangelized, they live in the 1040 window. Out of the 7.9 billion people, you have 2.2 billion unevangelized. 90% of these people live in this area, the greatest number of Muslims in Indonesia. There are more Buddhists in Asia. You have more atheists in Asia. You have more Hindus in Asia. The only so-called Christian nation in Asia is what country? Louder. Surprise. And that's why I want us to realize CCF is a movement of ordinary men and women like you, like me, who wants to reach out to the whole world so that they will come to know Jesus one soul at a time, one family at a time, one community at a time. Amen. So do you realize tayo lang ang ano, bansa na nasa loob ng 1040 window. We have a very special part to play in God's plan to bring the gospel to the world. So what are we doing about it as a church? Yeah, very good. Beyond, that's why we have CCF Beyond, Young Missions Department of CCF. We already shared a little bit about what we are doing. We have two main things that we do. One is international church planting. We make disciples and start house fellowships and CCF satellites outside of the Philippines, okay? Primarily reaching the Filipino diaspora. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Yung mga Pinoy na nag-migrate sa abroad. Either migration or seeking work. Pero dami nga ng mga Pinoy sa labas ng ng Philippines. Yun ang pinaka-target ng international church planting. We also are reaching out to others, but primarily mga Pinoy. Presently, we have 48 satellites and 70 plus house churches in five that should be continents not five countries. God has spread us all over the world. So now there are CCF satellites springing up everywhere. Kung kilala niyo ng ano, ng mga ano, kamag-anak, yung mga cousins, yung mga family members na nagtatrabaho sa abroad, and you want to get them connected, you can go to the CCF website and malalaman natin kung saan ang mga satellites. And we have contact information so you can get them connected with our CCF satellite. But the other thing that we are doing is what we call international missionary partnership. <clears throat> we work where there are few Christians, where there is often hostility to the gospel, with national leaders who are equipped with the go viral, MC squared process to plant and multiply house churches and fellowships. To date, by God's grace, we have helped to start over 40,000 house churches and small groups through our partnerships. And these are in places na napakahirap yung ano yung situation. Now, naiintindihan ko na ano, pag sasabihin mo na 40,000 house churches, hard to imagine. Anong ibig sabihin yan? So let me give you a few stories just to be able to help you to understand. The first one, we will show a video from South Asia to help you visualize. We were snake worshippers and went to the temple to feed milk to the snakes. We live in the mountains and one winter there was a lot of snow. My wife, who was pregnant at the time, slipped and fell. The baby died in her womb. We went to Christian hospital for treatment and my wife fell into a coma. The Christian doctor and nurses attending to her were sympathetic and prayed for her. They shared the gospel to me and prayed for my wife for three days. And the third day, my wife woke up as we were praying. I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior at that very moment. Then I asked many more questions about Jesus to this Christian doctor who is also a pastor. He gave me a Bible and taught me more about the Lord. 
we eventually started a house church in our home. One day while I was preaching, a radical religious group came and physically beat me up. They took me to a room and tortured me. They tried to force me to sign a suicide note with the intent of framing the murder as a suicide. Then one man, who I used to work in the kitchen with, helped me escape because he knew they were going to kill me. I hiked 80 kilometers to the hospital where the pastor was and they comforted me. However, I had discovered that the extremists had burned down my home. I had to live in the jungle, but I had hoped that one day I would overcome this case because my God is good. During this time, someone suggested that I meet with a district magistrate who could help me with the case. After six months, the court decided I was innocent and instead jailed the religious extremists. I was able to go back home and began farming to generate income. Several people encouraged me to run for the local elections, and so I did. Many were spreading disinformation that I would just convert everyone to Christianity. But I still won by seven votes and became the leader in my village. God helped me to make many changes in our village. Before, we had to carry pregnant ladies on a bed for 8 kilometers just to go to the hospital. And there were also no schools. One of the first things I accomplished was being able to get a road constructed and also to build a school. People appreciated the developments in the village. After I completed all four phases, I was able to raise three new leaders, and those leaders were also able to raise three more leaders to start new house churches in the area. I still live in the same village, doing my best to connect with people, sharing meals with them and conversing with them in their dialect. We also reached out to a jungle people who speak a language that we were not familiar with. By God's grace, now there are 20 leaders from that people who have started their own house churches. So God is good. And by God's grace, we have the opportunity to partner with people like that to make a difference. I want to tell two other stories. This one, I'm sorry, but I can't give you uh, any pictures because it's too dangerous to do it. But let me just tell you about a lady by the name of Samira. That's not her real name, by the way. She's a Muslim woman from an unreached people group in Northeast Africa. Um, the name of the group is called Sahat. After decades of war and bombings in the area, she found herself having to flee her homeland to a refugee camp that is just across the border in, in the south. It was here that God would change her life forever. Due to the trauma of war and the difficulties of life, Samira struggled with severe mental health issues, and many people would attribute those to spiritual attacks or demonic attacks. She would often lash out, screaming and crying. This led to fighting with her neighbors and almost everybody in the area. The entire community knew about her and her outbursts, and they were deeply afraid of her. After many traumatic episodes, Samira was admitted to the refugee camp's clinic, where many hoped that they could bring relief to her and to the community that she was terrorizing. One night in the clinic, as she was sleeping, after being attacked once again by her mental and spiritual struggles, Samira had a vivid dream. Jesus appeared to her. Not only did Jesus appear to her, Jesus spoke with her. In her dream, Jesus told Samira to go find a local community of believers, followers of Christ. And in that community, there would be people who would pray for her so that she could be healed. The next day, which happened to be a Sunday, Samira shared what had happened to her in her dream to a believer named Khalil. In another God-ordained way, Khalil just happened to be going through CCF Beyond's Go Viral MC Squared training. When Samira reported to Khalil that she had met Jesus in a dream, Khalil brought her to his community church, which was also led by an MC Squared graduate. Together, the members of the community church prayed for Samira, and she was delivered from the mental and spiritual issues that had been tormenting her for years, instantly. On that very Sunday, 
she became a follower of Jesus. Samira is now going through the MC Square training herself, and she is committed to helping the religious cousins in her community who were formerly afraid of her to also see and experience the transforming power of Jesus Christ and the gospel. Amen. Amazing what has happened to her. Last month, uh, we can show a couple of pictures here. So last month, uh, we were traveling in another South Asian country. I can't tell you where it was, but they had this welcome for us. It was like a big celebration, people in costumes, singing songs, dancing and everything. This is a community that three to five years ago, there were no known Christians. This is a tribal group in this area, but some of our graduates from MC Squared had gone there, they had started a church, and we were there for a celebration because they were going to hold a baptism. And while we were there, we found out that now they have maybe 10 or 15 churches in the area, and all of these people are new believers, and they were so excited because we were the first foreign Christians that they had ever met. Then, after that, we went to a baptism, and I can't show you the pictures of that, but about 25 people were baptized together in a lake nearby this place where we had this event. Um, praise God. Unfortunately, we had to leave in a hurry because there were a group of people that were following us from the other religious group in the area that didn't like our presence there. So it is a challenging place to do ministry. Now we also went to another place very nearby, another village with another people group. This is a house church. Of course, you can't see the house because they meet outside, okay? But it's a, it's a house church. The interesting thing here, these are all three months old in the Lord or, yes, or less. They have just come to know the Lord. And most of them had never heard who Jesus was before. This is one of our trainers. And this is one of the guys that he's training. He is the house church leader of these people. This guy was the one that led him to Christ and got him trained to be able to be a house church leader. The guy next to him was also a house church leader that trained this person. And then this guy was the house church leader that trained this person. In less than three years, four generations of house churches that have been formed in an area where previously there were no believers. That's why we do what we do. This isn't just a ministry within the church. This is our ministry as a church. Why? We all know Matthew chapter eight, uh, 28, verse 19 and 20. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit, uh, Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I commanded you. But we always tell you something when we teach you this. What is the main verb here? The main verb is it to go. Is it to make disciples? Is it to baptize? Now, if you're a good CCFer, alam naman yung ano yung sagot dyan. Make disciples. Yung ang pinaka-importante sa ano sa verse na to. Kaso, hindi ka pwedeng ano, mag-obey kung hindi ka napapunta sa all nations. We need to go to all nations, not just to the Philippines, but to all nations. So we go back to our passage. It says that God blesses us that all the ends of the earth may fear him. Are we blessed in CCF? Are you blessed as a person? We are blessed. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to bless the ends of the earth. God blesses us to bless the world. So how can we use God's blessing to bring Christ to the nations. I want to give you several possible ways. I want you to get out, may binigay sa inyo na brochure, tapos sangano sobre, one envelope. I want you to get them out. Come on, reach down, pick it up, get it out. Hintayin kita, huh? Do you, does everybody have one? 
I want to see it. Hold it up. Okay? Pakita sa akin. Marami na mga no. Ayawi. Now, if you don't have one yet, we have people in the back that will be handing them out so you can put your hand up if you don't have one yet. You can read itong in a brochure dito later after the service. Hindi kailangan basahin ngayon. But I want you to take out yung ano yung envelope. Kasi hindi lang envelope to. This is also a response form. Pwede nga na mag-respond dito. And there are actually three possible suggested practical ways na pwede tayo nga na mag-respond dito. Unang una, tanong ko sa inyo, how many people here can pray? Dalawa lang? Ayan. Lahat tayo. Pwede tayo na mag-pray. So, tanong ko lang, saan maabot yung ganyang prayers natin? Dito lang sa Philippines? Or sa ibang ano bansa din? Sa lahat. Kahit saan yung ano yung ano, yung object ng prayer, abotin yung ano yung prayer, yung prayer sa Panginoon and He can answer anywhere in the world. So the first thing that we can do to bring the gospel to the rest of the world is to pray. That is the first response. So, dito sa loob ng, ano, ng envelope, may tatlong ano, options. Pray, serve, and give. If you are willing to pray, I want you to check that and then give us contact information so that we can email mga prayer requests. I was going, pumapunta kami sa, ano, sa MMRC a few months ago for a retreat. Abang nandun sa, ano, sa road, gutom na ako. So, we stopped by McDonald's. I was in line waiting. Meron din dito ha? Dito sa harap. Meron din silang and dito sa ano sa kabila. So I stopped to get McDonald's. Eh, kasi ano, Americano ako. So I got my McDonald's. As I'm in the, the line, may lumapit sa akin na, ano, na lady with her family. Sabi nila, ikaw ba si, ano, si Pastor Jim? Sabi ko, oh, we pray for CCF Beyond. Yung buong familia, pati yung ano yung mga anak nila. And they were so excited because the whole family prays together and they see when God answers prayer. If you pray, you will have your heart aligned to God when you pray. So I encourage you to pray. Pangalawa, you can serve. We're not going anywhere. The second is that you can serve. I was debriefing with a group of people and uh, uh, they just came back from a short-term mission trip to Cambodia. Yung isang nga babae doon, sabi niya nung nagpunta siya, parang isip niya na baka hindi siya effective kasi hindi niya alam yung ano yung language ng ano ng tao. Tapos hindi siya masyadong mahilig sa mga bata. And the, the ministry was to do a daily vacation Bible school sa mga bata tapos sports camp sa mga bata. And sabi niya, hindi ako makaka-relate eh. Hindi masyado ako ano magaling sa, sa mga bata. But when she got there, she did what she was supposed to do. Meron sila gano, small group ng mga bata. Maybe 12 years old, something like that. And at the very end of the short-term mission, yung isang gano, bata, babae, came up to her and gave her a big hug. And she was crying. And tinanong niya yung ano yung, ano, yung like to translate sa kanila, bakit ano umiyak yung ano yung bata? Sabi niya, itong ano bata, she just received Jesus as her Savior and Lord. And she wants to thank you for coming. Because before that, she had never even heard the name of Jesus before. Imagine your impact. You can go on a short-term mission and do something like this lady. You can also do what these guys are doing. Sila nga ng mga volunteers natin. Pwede kang ano, maok ng ano, ng flag, during flag ceremony. There's many things that you can do in service for the Lord through beyond. So if you would like to do that, please check that. Pero siyempre, another way that you can serve is by giving. If God has blessed you, if God has given you abundant supply, ibigay sana sa Panginoon. But not just your normal tithe. Go above and beyond that and give towards missions. Allow God to bring the gospel to other places because 
God has blessed you. I'd like to give you just a moment to fill that out. And then later, after you fill it out, pwedeng i-drop sa ano sa mga karton. These guys have yung beyond boxes. You can fill it out and put it into the box after we are done. But I want us first to just pray for a moment. Why don't we pray together? Father, we thank you that you are such a gracious God. You have blessed us in so many ways. Father, we live in a free country. We, have, we live in a place where we can worship you openly. We live in a place where we can share the gospel with our loved ones, with our friends, openly. But there are so many places in the world that that's not possible. Lord, our hearts go out to those that have never heard about Jesus. And right now I pray that you would speak to each one of us about how you want us to respond. Lord, we know that there are many people that are here that are perhaps here for the first time. Hindi pa narinig yung ano yung gospel, hindi pa kilala ng Panginoon. Or baka ano, bago sila sa journey ng ano, Christian life. Lord, I pray that you would speak to them as well, that the greatest gift that they can experience, the greatest blessing that there is in life is having a personal relationship with you. And Lord, I pray even right now that you would work in their hearts to help them realize that the reasons we do all of these things to reach others is because of what you have done in our own lives. Father, draw them to Jesus. And Lord, I pray for each one of us, Lord, that you would help us to obey. Lord, I pray that you would help us to give back, to be able to use the blessings that you've given to us to bless the nations. Lord, we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Good day, CCF family. Welcome to Sunday Fast Track, where you ask real life questions and we give you biblical truths. I'm Kyle Barrington from CCF Beyond, and we're here today with Pastor Jim Welchel, our CCF Beyond Missions Director, to answer your questions. Good day, Pastor Jim. How was the service? Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope they did. Praise the Lord. Okay, for our first question, I've been asked this question a lot. How would God's blessing apply to those who may not yet be followers of Jesus or are just getting started in their journey? What can they do to experience his blessing? Um, great question. Uh, obviously, the biggest blessing that uh, God offers to them is having a personal relationship with him. I think a lot of times we're looking for material solutions uh, to issues in life. Uh, the reality is many times the real solution isn't material at all. Now, sometimes God does bless us materially because he loves us. But I think all of us, whether we are new believers, not yet believers, wherever we are in the journey, I think we need to recognize that the greatest blessing that God gives us is his presence, his salvation. So I would encourage people that haven't yet experienced that you know, just to explore, find out what it means to have a personal relationship with Christ, because I believe that's the greatest blessing they can experience. Excellent. Okay, for our second question, I think it's safe to say that Jesus and his disciples were the most blessed people who have ever lived. Yet they had little or no material possessions. What could we say to people who think of blessings as being material possessions versus God's presence with us? Are those in conflict? Yeah, you know, there are some people that God has blessed materially, and it truly is a blessing to them. Um, I know some people that are incredibly generous with the things that have been given to them, and they are blessed even more as they share those blessings with others. Uh, I find that people that seek to kind of cling on to the blessings uh, rarely are as satisfied with the material things as those that give. Um, so I think that it's not necessarily there, there is a conflict. You can be blessed by God and have material things, but I think it's your attitude towards those. Is that the source of your fulfillment? Uh, if it is, you're probably going to be disappointed. But if your source of fulfillment is honoring God with the possessions that you have, uh, perhaps being generous with those, um, I think God is free to bless you and you will experience his favor, uh, not just the material blessings. 
Let's move to question number three. It seems clear that God's priority in giving blessings is for us to bless the nations or to bless others. Pastor Ricky showed us this in the New Testament last week, and you actually just showed us this again in the Old Testament this week. What needs to change in us so that we will prioritize being a blessing to all nations rather than just keeping those blessings for ourselves? Can we do anything practically? Uh, great question. I think lahat tayo, yung ano yung mga parang yung mahal sa buhay, malapit sa atin yan. They're the people that we first think about of blessing. So naturally naman, I mean, you you think of how do you bless people? You think about your family, yung familia nyo, yung ano yung extended family. But we have to change the attitude that that's it. But I don't know, if you look at uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, uh, many times we say, you know, we are to start in Jerusalem and then go to Judea and Samaria and then the uttermost parts. But I need a man ganoni. I need a man either or. It's both and. So I think most of the attitude issue is we don't wait until we finish with our family, finish with those close to us. Lahat sila ano Christian na, so meritang ano opportunity to go to the next place. Actually, we can start even while we are reaching our loved ones. And for our final question, you said in your message that blessing the nations isn't just a ministry within the church, it's our ministry or our mission as a church. What adjustments could we make as the church to be more aligned with God's desire to bless the nations? We can all pray. I, I don't think that any of us is limited geographically by our prayers. And I think all of us within CCF, of course, when we do our prayer meetings and things like that, the tendency is to focus on things that are just here in the mm -hmm. Philippines. I think that we could probably improve in making people more aware of what God is doing outside of the Philippines and praying more diligently for that. Obviously, we can serve more. We can actually send more short-term missionaries. We can do more in terms of helping people uh, serve within CCF, but towards the nations. So I think giving more awareness of the opportunities is one thing that we can do. And of course, giving, um, although that's not the primary thing. We're not about, you know, just giving lots of money. But I think there is a legitimate desire that people have to bless uh, the ministry of the church. And if we can focus a little bit more of that on what's happening outside of the Philippines, I think that would be a good move. Excellent. Thank you, Pastor Jim. We appreciate you answering our questions and the questions of our CCF family. That concludes our Missions Month. Can you believe it? To know more about missions and how you can be a part of God's movement globally, scan the QR code below or visit ccfbeyond.org. We're excited to partner with you, and we mean that. We're also excited to let you know that we will have a brand new series this week with our senior pastor, Dr. Peter Tanchi. And that's it for CCF Sunday Fast Track. Happy Missions Month.